Hello, this is Bill Webb, aka Billy Indiana. Today I'm going to do a partial playthrough and review for the game Jaipur by Sebastian Pauchan, I hope I'm saying that name right, and published by Space Cowboys Games. Let's get it to the table. As you can see, Jaipur is another small box game and one that my wife and I like to play. It's a two-player only game. Uh, it says, become the Maharaja's personal trader. On your turn, you're going to buy or sell. Uh, win two rounds and win the game. So let's see what's in the box, and then I'll show you how to play. Got an instruction uh, manual, just a quick rule book. Pretty brief. It's a pretty easy game to learn. And then the Space Cowboys little advertisement. Um, this one came with a little nice medallion. I'll put it under the close-up camera here in a little bit and show it to you. It says Jaipur on one side and has the Space Cowboys emblem on the other. Um, and then it's got the cards, which are the focus of the game. Playing these cards. And then it's got a lot of little tiles. And I'll explain how all these tiles work. There's a number of different ones. Um, there are some that keep track of who wins each round and who has the most camels in their herd. And there are some bonus tiles. And then these are the scoring tiles. So I'll put some of these things under the close-up camera, tell you a little bit about what they do, and then we'll set it up for a game. So these are the tile components of the game. Like I said, there's this collector's token here. It just says Jaipur on the front. And then on the back has the Space Cowboys emblem or insignia there. And then this is the token for the player who has the largest camel herd worth five points at the end of the round. Then these are to track who wins each of the rounds. They're just double-sided uh, tokens, and it's the first one to win two out of three. And then we've got bonus tiles for if you are able to turn in sets of three, you would pull a bonus tile off of here. And these are ordered randomly. They have a variety of different point totals on the other side. So these have threes, twos, and ones, and they're just randomly ordered on the table. And same thing here for if you turn in four at a time, and same thing here if you turn in five. These are greater values, so you got sixes and fives and fours, and then these sets of five, you have eights, tens, and a nine. And so those are just randomly ordered on the table. And then these are for gold, silver, and diamonds, and then for spices, silk, and leather. Um, and then for all of these, they are put in a descending order. So uh, the first one to buy gold would get six, and then six, and then the next five, and then the next five. Uh, and then these are also all in descending order for the various different kinds of goods. So let me show you the cards now. All right, so here are the different kinds of cards. We just have a stack of them here. Uh, we've got our diamonds card, the red ones. We've got silver here, and then we've got gold. Those are the rare items worth more valuables, and you have to trade those in at a minimum of two at a time. Then you've got leather, and then spices, and silk. And then there are camels to try to build up your herd. So let me set this up for a game, tell you how to play, and then do a little quick playthrough. Well, as I mentioned, uh, Jaipur is a two-player only game. And I've kind of got it set up here so you can see how it goes. We've got our stack of cards, our river of five. You always have five in the river. And you start the game always with three camels and then two random cards. And then here are the stacks of bonus tiles and then gold, silver, and diamonds. And then spices, silk, and leather. And then this is the Camel Herd uh, award winner for each round. You get five bonus points if you have the largest Camel Herd at the end of the round. And then these are, like I said, the round victory markers to see who wins the best of three. I've set it up with the two hands here so I can kind of talk you through a couple rounds and let you know how it works. Uh, each player is dealt five cards. And the winner is the player who scores the most points. And you get your points from collecting these tiles. Um, you would collect the tiles for leather, silk, and um, spices by turning sets of those cards in. You can technically turn one in at any time to collect a tile. If you turn two, you would take two tiles. If you turn three, you'd take three tiles, and then you get a three-tile bonus. If you turn four, you'd take four of these and get a four-card bonus, and same for five. So that's basically how you're going to run the turns in order to earn the tiles. Every turn, you're going to do one of two things. You're either going to sell or buy. If you're selling, that's when you're turning cards in out of your hand, and you're um, gaining the tiles for the things that you'd sell. If you're buying, you're going to buy them from this river here. If you buy one from the market, I guess, better way to say it in this particular game. Uh, if you buy one, you just take that one card 
and you just flip it over. It technically doesn't really cost you anything in trade. If you want more than one, then you have to trade in cards uh, into your uh, from your hand into this pile. So if I wanted to take uh, these two, for instance, um, I would have to trade in three to take those two. Um, at the beginning of the game, you look at your hand and you see what you have in your hand. So I've got a gold and a leather and a silk and a two silver. So collecting silver is going to be something I'm going to shoot for. Gold's always good. It's uh, one of the more valuable ones, but uh, there's a silk out here. So I may want to try to get that silk um, and see if I can collect that as well. So that's my starting hand, what I've got collected. The other player here also got a gold, got a leather, got a, a spice and a silver and a silk. So they got a really wide variety. They might be also wanting to try to pick up this silk. And like I said, they, uh, gold's always good. And then they'll probably want to try to get that spice as well. Um, so that's our starting cards. The other thing you can do during your turn is to take the camels. And so instead of um, buying or trading goods, you can take the camels and add them to your herd. If you take them, you have to take all of them and then they just get replaced from the stack here. So we'll play a few rounds and uh, we'll say that I'm the first player. Uh, I have these silvers, but I'm going to try to get that um, get that uh, silk there. So I'm going to take the silk and add it to my hand. You can only ever have seven cards in your hand, so you have to be a little bit careful um, as you're working. And since I only took one, it doesn't cost me anything, I'm going to flip that over. And that was my turn. Now, player two, if they look at their hand, they've got this gold. They definitely want that other gold, and they've got spice. So they kind of want both of these cards, um, but they can't just take them if they want to take more than one. They have to actually trade. So they're definitely going to keep those. Um, silver's pretty valuable, so they'll probably trade these two. And so they know that I'm taking silk, so that might be a risk they wouldn't want to give, but um, they just saw me take it in the previous round, but they're less valuable than the other ones in their hands. So they're going to trade. They're going to take spice and gold, and they're going to turn in their silk and their leather into the pile. So now they've got two gold, they've got two spice and a silver in their hand. All right. And so now, as I'm looking here, um, I'm a little tempted to just take those three camels uh, because I've already got um, six cards in hand. And so if I take this, that's fine. Um, it would give me a set of three, but it also maxes out my hand. So I've got to decide, do I want to go ahead and get that while it's there? Uh, she discarded it, so she's probably not going to pick it up herself. I might want to go ahead and take the camel so I have a better trading option in the future. But the risk of taking the camels, if I take all three, that gets replenished from this stack. And so I don't know what's going to come out. And I might give exactly on this, on this market what she needs. So it's kind of a give and take, a push and pull of what you want to do. I do think I will go ahead and take those three camels because you can trade camels just like goods when you're taking uh, items out of the market. And you just keep your camel herd here in front of you. So I'll keep my camels there. And then this is my hand of cards. So that was my turn. And then we would replenish for the camels. Oof, two diamonds and a leather. All right. So back to player two. They've got their two spice and their two gold. And they've got this silver. Um, so they got five cards in hand. And there's really nothing out here that matches what they want. They could try to take these two diamonds because they're the most valuable. Uh, but that means they do have to give up two of something. And so they'd have to break up one of their pairs here. So that's what they're going to have to try to decide. Now, they could just trade them and hope that I don't take them, but that's probably a pretty good long shot that I'm not going to take those two diamonds. Uh, so they have to decide what's what's more important. Now, gold are more rare, so it's a little bit harder to get sets. Um, and so she may even just want to go ahead and turn in the gold right now. Uh, so let's say she's just going to sell the gold. So we discard the gold here. And that means she is going to get the top two tiles. And so she's going to get 12 points uh, for those two gold. All right. And that is her turn. She decided to sell. Now for me, one of the reasons that she wasn't too worried about me taking the diamonds is I already have a pretty good handful of cards. I can't take both of these and uh, give away camels for them because I would have more than seven cards in my hand. I've already got six. So if I gave away camels to get those diamonds, I would have eight cards and I'd be stuck. So my best bet though is if I give up a leather and give up a camel, I can take those two diamonds. She was hoping that I wouldn't have a singlet that I was willing to give up like that. Now I do have seven cards, so I'm going to have to trade something in the next round um, to get, uh, or um, 
yeah, I'm going to have to sell something or trade something. And I don't really want to trade. I'm probably going to want to sell at this point. All right, this player's turn. So there's, she's got silver and she's got spices. Nothing really matches here. Um, so she'll just take a camel and add to the herd and see what pops up. Lots of leather. All right, so I don't want any of that leather. And I can't take, um, I can't take this silk because that would give me eight cards. So I'm going to go ahead and turn in the two diamonds. I'm going to sell these two diamonds. I'm going to take the top two. So I'm going to get 14 points for those diamonds. And that's my turn. Back to the player two. Um, can't take all four because they'd have to give up everything in their hand. I guess they could give up the camel and all these to get all four leather. Um, giving up a diamond, which is valuable. But uh, yeah, let's say let's go for it because that's four of a kind. That means it's going to earn them a bonus to turn in the camel. Even though they're turning in a pair here, um, they're going to get four of a kind, so they're going to go for it. Might not be the best call in the long run, but we'll see. All right, back to me. Um, I don't really want to trade in to get those two gold or two uh, greens. I've got five cards, so I'm going to have to. Um, I could pick up. I could pick them both up for the camels, and that would give me seven. But I think I'm going to go ahead and take the silk, and that's going to give me a set of three in the silk, and that'll be my turn. This player is going to turn all four in, four leather, so they're going to take four tiles here. So you get a four points, three points, two points, and one. And then that's a four of a kind, so they're also going to four of a kind bonus. And they can look at it, but you don't necessarily have to reveal it to the rest. So they got four points on this one. All right, and they're out of cards, so they're going to have to do some uh, fancy working here to get back in the game with some supplies. Um, for this player here, uh, back to me again, I've got, I'm going to give these three silk. And that'll give me three silk tiles and a three of a kind bonus. And that's my turn. So this player is going to go ahead and take uh, the, don't have anything to trade in, so we're going to take the two camels. And back to my turn. I'm going to take this silver and just take that one, so that gives me three silver. Back to player two. Um, they could trade these two in for the spices, so they'll do that. Turn in two camels and take those two spices. And now I think I'm just going to take all those camels. I'm going to get a big old herd going here. So now I've got five camels over here in my herd. Ooh, turn over another diamond. And that's my turn. Now this player has their two spices, so they could trade them in. Um, or they could try to start just pulling up tiles one at a time. Um, I think they're just going to see if they can slowly pick away at these diamonds, hoping that maybe I won't uh, take them out of their hands. So now I've got three diamonds, and I uh, don't see any more out there. I may want to trade them in, or I may want to see if I can... Or sorry, I yeah, three silvers. Uh, I may want to... Uh, I know she's trying to get... But the diamonds and the spice. I know she has both those in her hand, so I could kind of hate draft and take one of them from her. Uh, diamonds are more valuable, and I don't see anything else that I want, although I could start collecting leather. I'll do that. I'll be a nice guy. Uh, I'll take two leathers, and I'll turn in two camels. So now I'm collecting something else. All right, she's super happy that I did that. She's going to take this diamond because it's way more valuable than the spice, potentially. And she can take one out. There's two spices out there for her if she wants them. All right, now I'm building my hand back up. I'm back up to six now. There's nothing out here that matches. So I could go ahead and turn in. In fact, I think I will go ahead and turn in the three silver. So I get my three silver tiles. And I get a three of a kind bonus. Back to her. Okay, um, so she can't really take the two uh, spices yet. So she's going to take the two camels. She could take them one at a time. I'm just going to take the two camels and hope maybe I won't take those spices on my turn. Now, I do have three camels in. I could trade in. I've got two leather and I've got a gold. So nothing really matches. Um, the spices are more valuable than the leather. So I know she wants them. So I'm going to kind of be a little bit hateful this time. I'm going to turn in uh, two camels and take those two spices. But she's not too happy with me right now. As she's looking out here, she could start trying to take this, the um, 
silk here. Uh, she's got two diamonds and two spices. Uh, but I think she's going to actually just go for the camels and try to build up some trading power here. And the round ends when either three of these stacks get emptied or these cards are gone. All right. So I see now she's building up a pretty good herd there. Um, I've got two leather, two spice, and a gold. And so I've got to figure out, okay, what am I going to do here? Those spices look pretty good. Um, I could trade in my two leather for the two spices. I could trade in the gold and a leather. The gold's worth five points, so even just at one. So I think what I'll do is I, I want to keep my camel, so I'm going to take these two spices, and I'm going to turn in, trade in two leather for them. And that's my turn. Back to her. Okay, she's got two diamonds and she's got two spices. There's neither one of those out there. She does have a whole herd of camels, and she can take three cards. So since there's three silk out there, she's going to gobble up those three silk, trading in camels. And that maxes her out. She's up to seven cards now in her hand. Back to me, I've got four spices and a gold. Um, I just traded in. I could go ahead and, and nab those um, camels. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I'll try to see. Hopefully she won't steal those spices on me. So I'm going to nab those camels. That gives me four. And then there's one, two, there's gold. Fill it back up and back to her. Now she's going to have to trade something in here. She can't carry any more cards. So if she trades in these, she's going to get a three of a kind bonus. She's going to trade in the three silk. She's going to get three silk tokens. And she's going to get a three of a kind bonus. And that's her turn. All right, I have four, five cards. And I really want the silk and the gold. So I can hold two. So I'm going to take the silk and the gold. The gold goes here, silk, and I'm trading in those camels. And now I'm up to five. I'm up to seven cards. I'm going to have to trade in next time. All right, she has a little bit more decisions to make. She could just keep hunting here, but she's going to take those camels and build up the herd. Maybe get that five point bonus for the biggest herd, and see if she can turn over either diamonds or silk to help her out in the next round. All right. I've got all these silk. I'm going to trade those in. So I've got five silk. I'm trading them in. So I'm going to get five tiles here from the silk pile and a five bonus. That's a really good hand for me. All right. She's going to take this diamonds because she can take it for free and not have to trade. And she's got a lot of camels over here. Now, um, I could go ahead and turn in these gold. I could start gathering leather with my camels. She's probably going to beat me out on the camels. We're, there's, these are getting pretty low here, so I'm guessing they're going to be disappearing here pretty quickly. So I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can maybe get another little set of leather here. I think she's going to beat me on the camels anyway. So I'm going to take those leather. Now I've got two leather and two gold. And I'm probably going to need to make sure I turn those in pretty quick before we run out of time. Now she's got two spices and she's got three diamonds. The diamonds are pretty valuable and a three of a kind bonus too. So she's going to turn those in get the three that are left for the diamonds. So now one of those piles is gone and also get the three of a kind bonus. And that's her turn. All right. I have nothing to trade to get those two leathers at a time. I want to make sure I don't miss out on selling the gold too though. So um, I'm going to risk it one more time. I'm going to take one leather knowing that I can take that and not um, I'm not losing anything. Now she sees that I've given up on camels and she's got two silvers out there. She's going to take those two silvers and throw some camels back out there. Now, now I've got some harder decisions because uh, now I could overtake the camels if I just swipe all those. But I also don't want to miss out on turning these in for points. But I'm going to go for it. I'm going to keep pushing my luck. I'm going to take all those camels, see if I can get that herd bonus. We're getting low on cards and tiles here, so it could end pretty quickly. All right. And then for my uh, for her turn, uh, she's got the two spices and she's got the two silver and none of that's out there. She could take the one camel and see if she can make up some ground for me. Uh, but um, hmm, yeah, it'd be really helpful if she could get another spice. I think she's going to go ahead and turn in the diamond or the silver though, just to make sure she doesn't miss out. So she gets those two silver tiles. And that's down to two. So as soon as any of these next piles end or disappear, they're gone. So I don't want to miss out on the gold. So I'm going to turn in those two gold. 
and get those two tiles. I'm gonna quit trying to wait for that. Oh, I didn't. I just wasn't paying attention. There's a third one right there. Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna do that. Take backs. I'm gonna. Ooh man, but she's probably gonna close me out here. I gotta risk it. So I'm gonna turn in a camel for the gold. Maybe she won't end it out. I don't know what she has in her hand, but now she's got the turn. She could try to take the camels back, or she should turn. She could turn these in and try to end the round before I can get the gold. Oh, sorry, forgot to put those gold back too. Can't have it both ways. <laughs> uh, so she's got these two spices. She could turn them in and end the round. Um, but I think she's going to go ahead and take the camels. That five-point bonus would probably be more helpful in the long run. All right, and I've got gold and leather, so I am finally going to turn in those three gold. I get all three tiles and a three bonus, and that ends the round. All right, um, and so these don't get scored, and these don't get scored, um, and we just count up the points in our piles here. So I'll count them up and show them on the close-up camera for you. So these are my tiles at the end of the round. I've got, these are the bonus, the three of a kind, four of a kind bonuses. I got 10, two, two, and four, and three. So I got 17 there. I got 14 for my diamonds. That gives me 31. Um, and then I've got uh, 11 here for my silk. That gives me 42. Uh, and then 15 gives me 57. Uh, 15 more gives me 67, 72. Uh, and then 5, 10, 15 more, 72, 87. I believe that's 87 points. And I did not get the camel bonus, so that is a solid 87 there for me. Let me show you the opponent score. So this is player number two. They didn't get very large numbers on their bonuses here, so they got eight on the bonus, plus five for the camel herder. Uh, so that gives them 13, plus 12 gives them 25, uh, 35, 45, 50, 55. Uh, 56, 58, 61, 65, if I'm not mistaken. So 87 to 65, if I counted those up correctly. So not a great round for player number two there. Uh, played it pretty quickly, so I'm sure I made quite a few mistakes in terms of strategy. I'm, I'm guessing I almost missed that, uh, getting three of a gold, three of a kind gold. And, um, it's hard to play as if you don't know the other hand when you do see both, but at least hopefully that gives you a good feel for how the game plays. So for my review of Jaipur, um, I go through these six categories for every review and kind of give a zero, one, or two. Zero means it's really failed. One, it's good, but not great. Two is one of the best. So for production, uh, this game, I feel like it's not overly produced. You know, it's not going to have all the minis and big fancy features of some of the bigger games, but it's a small box game. It's a card game. And for a card game, I think the production value is quite good. Uh, the art is really nice. The tiles are nice and thick and have great art on them. And then the little metal uh, token. I know that doesn't come in every version of the game, but that little metal token is really cool, and that's pretty sharp. Uh, and then just the art, like I said, it's, it's really nice. So I would still give it a 2 out of 2 for production because for what it is, a small card game, it's very good. For theme, I would say, like most little card games, there's some there is some theme, but it's you could make any theme. This game could be any theme, and so it's not immersive. I don't generally think, oh, I'm trying to get silk or I'm trying to get leather. I'm just matching and getting sets, so I don't really feel like it's immersive, but it's also not terrible. I mean, the theme does fit, and um, you're trading and selling goods, and so I, I feel like it's a one out of two for theme. For mechanics and decision-making, surprisingly for this small game, and you could get a, maybe a little bit of a sense of it, I was playing pretty quick in the playthrough, but um, and not really thinking too deeply, but you could get a sense of the push and pull and when do I take and, and having to keep track of maybe what the other person's getting and watching for the end of the game. And, you know, should I let them get that? Do I need to take it? Should, do I turn it in now? Lots of things to really push and pull with, lots of decision making. And so especially for such a small card game, I think the decision making uh, and mechanisms involved, while they're simple, it's deep enough. I feel like it's worthy of a two. Um, it really does make you think and gives you a lot to think about for such a small game. For game flow, I think it's um, really good as well. It's going to uh, be a quick game. We can play all three rounds in a half an hour, 35 minutes, 40 minutes at the max. I could see where someone that really maybe suffers with AP and get, could bog down a bit, but um, it's a pretty quick game. And 
the turns are faster. You're not waiting very long, and you do want to keep track of what the other person's doing, so you're paying attention during their turn, too. It's not like you're completely disengaged. So I feel like Gameflow is good. I would give it a 2. For replay value, um, while there is a, a pretty good depth of thinking while you're playing, and it's a nice quick game, um, and we do enjoy playing it, I don't see that we would be pulling this out every game night. And I don't. we have a lot of other two-player games that are also really good. And so while it's good, I wouldn't say it's great. It's not necessarily my number one two-player game, but it's, it's solid. It's better than some that I've tried and some that I've gotten rid of, and I will keep this one. Um, so I would give it a one uh, for replayability. And then for... And mainly just because, you know, there's only the, the six kinds of goods and pretty soon you kind of understand what the ratios are and probabilities. And um, so it's it doesn't have enough play, replayability to me, enough flexibility with the games. While there's going to be some new nuances and newness to it each time, I don't see it as highly replayable. And then for the last one, just my overall personal opinion and value of the game uh, I already kind of let the cat out of the bag a little bit that this is staying on the sh on our shelf. Um, if it was a zero, I'd probably be looking to trade it away. If it was a two, I would rank it in my top 20, at least maybe top 50, probably more like towards the top 20, 25. I, and I don't rank it that high. It's a good game. It's a really nice game, and, and we'll keep it probably forever. I don't really see us getting rid of this one. It is a nice filler. It's a nice two-player game, too, that my wife and I can just enjoy. We just want to get a quick game in before bed or before dinner. Um, so definitely a solid game, a one out of two on that one. So overall, that gives it me a total score of nine out of 12 on that 12 sided die. Very solid score. Um, definitely one that's going to be on our shelf for a long time. So I hope the playthrough and the review and the rating system for you were helpful. And if you enjoyed the video, I'd love it if you click on that like button down below. It'd be great if you'd subscribe to the channel and follow along with what I'm doing. Um, and if you want to click that bell, icon. You can get notifications of when I put out new content. Uh, if you have comments about Jaipur, maybe something that I messed up in the playthrough or just questions or something you really like about the game of Jaipur, put those in the comments below. I'd love to read about it. And as always, thanks for watching. This is Billy Indiana signing off. Uh -huh.